Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video we are going to start with our tutorial on the Inibils A300 aircraft. We are sitting in the freighter in Minneapolis and we're going to fly it down to Indianapolis. A quick one hour and a bit flight which is going to be sufficient to teach you everything you need to know for standard operation of the airplane. In this first episode we are going to start with the electrical power up and with the initial configuration of the airplane. So do follow me inside as we're about to start our setup. Now we're going to start with the preliminary cockpit preparation procedure and this one is actually quite easy. So we'll start with the batteries making sure that they are all on. So one, two and three. Batteries coming on and that puts the airplane into its startup procedure. Now, an Airbus is a computer, so just like any computer, when you turn it on, it needs a little time to boot up, so just give it that little time. We can, in the meantime, continue with the rest of our safety checks, though. So, next up we go to the hydraulic panel and make sure that the electric pumps are switched off. Then we move down to the wipers, making sure that they are off, and we can move down to the gear lever, making sure it is down. From there we move to the slats flaps handle and make sure that it agrees with the position indicated on the indicator. So you can see right now they are both retracted and the lever is in the zero position as well. Then we move down to the reverses, making sure that they are down. And then we can move to the fuel levers, making sure that they are off. From there we move to the weather radar, ensure that the system is off and then we can turn on external power as needed. The checks we've done so far are basically done to ensure that the airplane is safe for electrical power to be applied. Now, once we apply AC electrical power, things like the hydraulics might pressurize with the pump be on. And for that reason, we do all these checks. Okay, so we have determined that the airplane is safe to be powered on. So let's connect the external power like this and once external power is connected we can go ahead and do the APU fire test. The APU is the middle of the three fire switches that we've got in the airplane and before we do it we just make sure that the ECAM is powered so that we can check for correct indications. So let's go ahead with it now. We're going to start by executing the squib test. The squib test is located on the top up here and pressing that is going to illuminate the um, squib light on the agent. When we're done with that, we're going to do the loop test and now we expect several things to happen. First we get the loop A light, then we have a look down here at the ECAM, make sure we get the APU fire indication and at that point we should also get a single chime and the master caution for as long as the um, test sequence is running. Okay. So, that is the APU fire test completed, and then we can go ahead and turn on the APU if needed. Now, I'm saying APU if needed because, contrary to what many flight simmers do, you do not necessarily start the APU at any point in the pre-flight procedure. It might be done just prior to the pushback. Now. If we have a look at our um, weather, then it is pretty cold outside, recording this one in December. So we are going to start the APU nonetheless for completeness in the tutorial. So in order to start the APU, we'll start with the inner tank pump 2 switch. So that's inner tank pump number 2. That one is going to go on. So that APU is going to receive fuel. And then we can move down to the APU master switch located down here flick that to on and then we can select the start switch on like that and now the APU is going to start up. We can monitor the APU startup process down here on the APU ECAM page. So at first the flap is going to open and when that is happening the APU will slowly start running up. We can see it over here now where we've got the they just call it N over here. It's similar to the N1 that we have on the uh, turbine engines. With the exception that the N1 
in this case only is a single N because the APU is a single spool turbine. Alright, so the APU is running up and when the APU is completely started then it is available for electrical power as we can confirm on the ECAM page on the ECAM AC page as well then if needed. Now today we are just going to use it for bleed air and in order to do that we simply wait until the APU is running. We can confirm it over here. APU is showing available and with the APU available we can turn on the APU bleed which is going to start to provide air to the um, cabin and which is now nicely going to warm us up. Alright, when that is done AC electrical power is now safely established to our airplane. So now we can go ahead and align the IRSs. We've got them on the very aft end of the overhead panel, like number one, two, and three. On the inertial system display unit, that's the one over here, we make sure that present position is selected and that system number one is selected. Alright, from here on we move to the oxygen low pressure supply switch, which we can find on the um, upper side over here, making sure that this is on. So you might find it like this, so make sure that the system is turned on. Now we are going to make sure that all the lights in the airplane are actually serviceable. So we do the annunciator light test and that one's located down here. So you can see this triggers the um, this triggers all the lights and we just make sure that all the light bulbs are actually correctly working. Pretty much like so. And when the test is done, return the announcer. Yeah. When the test is done, you can return the uh, switch into the bright position for daylight flights or the dim position for night flights. Today it's daylight, so we are going to use bright. The final thing that we do as part of the preliminary cockpit preparation is to move down to the radios and we are going to pre-select the radios to the frequencies that we expect to use first. So you could either use the delivery frequency if you are flying with air traffic control or if you're flying without air traffic control then I personally like to set the Watts and Unicom frequency 1 to 2.8 which actually is the default in the Inibuilds A300 and then on radio number 2 we are going to use guard frequency which is going to be 1 to 1.5. When that is done we are going to make sure that we actually listen to the frequencies as well and we can do that down here on the audio control panel. The top row of buttons is for the microphone, so which of the devices you're transmitting on and the lower part is for what you listen to. So we make sure that the VHF1 is pulled out so that little white part at the bottom is visible. This is what it looks like when it's pushed in and this is what it looks like when it's pulled out. So we make sure that VHF1 and VHF2 are both pulled out. At this point we can also pull out the interphone system already which is going to become more interesting at a later point. Alright, and that is our preliminary cockpit preparation. With that the airplane is now powered up and now we can start preparing the airplane for our walk around and checking a couple of the maintenance options which you really should be doing in this airplane but that is going to be for part 2 of the tutorial series. Thank you very much for watching, I do hope you liked this one. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and then I see you all on the next one. In the meantime, be sure to hit that like button in YouTube, subscribe for the further tutorials, and if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and see you all again on the next one.